Hey, this is Carl from Jans Engineering, and I want to show everybody how easy it is to make a set of dummy bearings uh, so when they're doing my setups, uh, they can make the job just go a little bit smoother. Uh, your kit probably came with a dummy bearing for the pinion, which is a bearing you won't have, but you probably have some leftover carrier bearings around. And I want to show you just how easy it is to hone these out so the setup is much easier. Uh, I'm going to clamp it lightly in a vise, not too tight because you don't want to bend the cage. And then for sanding out, I've tried hones, I've tried sandpapers. These little flap wheels, I got a 60 grit flap wheel, 60 grit flap wheel here from the uh, hardware store, and they seem to work just about right. Use a smaller one if you got a smaller bearing. Now, as you grind around in these things, about every 30 seconds or so of grinding, you're going to take out roughly a quarter of a thousandth to a half thousandth. And without getting too technical, uh, we're going to, I just count to 100 the first time, and then I just keep counting about 30 seconds at a time until I start fitting. So let's get going. A little noisy here. Honing. That bearing is a little warm. You just go to cool it off in water. It's not too warm. And we'll see if we're starting to fit. So there. That is just about a perfect fit. I got no play on that carrier. Now, interestingly enough, this carrier, the, the bearing size is two and a quarter. So you want about, typically about a thousandths press fit per inch of diameter. So you would expect this to measure a two and a quarter plus two thousandths. This one actually only measures about three quarters of a thousandths over. This one, however, measures a thou and a half over. And this one measures three thousandths over. So, it, and this one's actually, this one over here is actually different on each side. So you've got to check your sizing out because you may have to make a bearing that fits each size. So like if we try this on this next size one bigger, see I can't get that to go down. I mean it's, I could beat it on but we don't want to slip fit. Now if you look inside the bearing a little bit, of course I got some wet marks. Sometimes you'll see a rub mark. That's a high spot. As you're going around inside that you want to stay even. It's not a perfect science. So it's a little tighter on the back side than it is on the downside. So I'm going to concentrate in here a little bit more while I'm grinding this one out. And since it's starting to go, I'm just going to give it a little bit. And every time I put this in, it's going to be a little different. So uh, I guess we ignore the phone, folks. The idea is, is, is to average out your variances. I cool it every time. I've had it where I had them warm enough, where I put it on and then it cooled down and I couldn't get it back off without, you know, grabbing a hammer or actually putting a puller on it. So it's really close. Still a little tighter on that side.
So now it thing just just pretty much should just drop on and off of this one. It's getting close. I probably got a little bit of grit in there. I'll give it just a little bit more. going quite as smooth as we want it to, but we'll get there. There we go. There's that magic little that slips on. And if you get it just a hair loose, you're going to be fine because it's, it's going to square up and center over here. Um, I've even, if I had one little off, put a little thick grease in there while I was doing the setup. That's the kind of fit we're looking for. And almost pick the carrier up where I can. Wiggle it on and off. And if you get it just a little crooked, of course, then it binds up, but it's just the way I want. Now, this is the fat daddy of them all. It's not going on there still. So, a little more work to get to that one. do it because it randomizes the air and it keeps my arms from cramping. So it looks like I got a little rock. I'm probably tight this way and that way. may have to look for a high spot and just work that area a little bit. That side's still tight. You can kind of see in here, it's biting in here. And over here, there's nothing. So I'm going to put it in, and that's opposite this side. I got a little bite mark there, a little bite there, nothing here, nothing there. So I'm going to work those areas just a little bit more because I've got it slightly out of round. Warm up a little bit. So it didn't take much to get it over that one that was only three quarter over, but that three takes a little bit more doing. All right. Let's Looking at where I'm rubbing. I've got it set in there. It's rubbing here and here. I'm going to work those a little more. Easier, you can like make the, the bottom side or back side a little bigger, and then as long as this is tight right at the end, sometimes they slip on and off easier. I'm getting a little bit of watery dirt build up here. Let's see, make sure we're not getting grit in the picture. 
And of course, when you're done with this, you're going to want to solvent clean and air, air clean everything. Notice I got holes over here so nothing's going to get down inside the inside of that locker. Normally, I have the stuff a little farther away from where I'm doing the grinding to keep it clean. We've done this for the video. So, a little more to go. starting to get just right. A little more. Oh, I forgot to cool it. Now I stuck it on there. halfway and they got tight so I just kind of worked that outside edge a little more this time you got to decide what's what you rocking and what's the bearing sliding if you rock a little bit it's going to be too tight You're almost there on this one. what we're looking for. Get all the dirt off of that. Or grinding grit, I should say. Now sometimes you get them crooked once they're a little loose. You put them all the way down And then they straighten out, and then you can slide them off with your fingers. <laughs> so that's about as good as you're going to get right there. There you go. Now I got to crick it again. How the hell with it? We got to still do a setup next. So hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and for those of you who are wondering, this little puppy here is a 40 spline spool. I've set it up with an index ring and re-drilled the pattern. This was a 40 spline 60 spool. It's now a 40 spline 70 spool if you're interested. Thank you and have a good day.